Hey guys, it's Kiwi Sylvian, and welcome back to Seduce Me the Otome. Otome, Otoma. In the last episode, we apparently found out that we have five incubi in our house. Yay! And two of them kissed us. And it's also where we technically started a romance with one of them, but which one? Oh, hi! Suddenly, a boy who looked around my age, or possibly younger, bounced up to me. He looked vaguely familiar. Oh, wait. Ah, you're Matthew, right? Mm-hmm. That's me. Are you feeling any better now? We were all worried when you suddenly passed out. I'm fine. Really? Your face is kind of red. Do you feel sick? No, I'm fine. I'm sure of it. I must have been blushing when Damien was carrying me downstairs. How embarrassing. Well, if you say so. I hope Sam and Eric didn't make you upset. It's okay. After all, I did hit Sam for what he did. And about Eric, I just wanted you guys to prove to me what you were saying. I suppose Incubi are real, then. You wondered how exactly I got myself into this mess. First my grandfather, then a fight with my father, pulling up at Lucette, and now this? I certainly had a knack for getting myself into sticky situations. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I have an idea. He shoved his hands into his pockets with a cheery grin on his face. Wait for it. Wait for it. Is he trying to do a magic trick? Ta-da! Um, what is that exactly? He sm smiled as if to wave it off, but when he opened his eyes and saw what he had was holding... His face froze in shock. Wait a second. What did I just make? This... This is... Mm. What he produced from his pocket was a creepy-looking doll. Ah, oh, what is that? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's so cute! His face paled considerably, and he dropped to the floor, scooting away from it frantically. Get it away from me! You might be possessed by a demon or something! Mm -hmm. But isn't he a demon himself? That's not what I wanted to make! I just wanted to surprise you with a stuffed animal or just something to cheer you up. That looks like it came straight out of a horror movie. He slumped his shoulders and looked down at his feet. It's okay, you don't have to look so dejected. I mean, it's certainly unique. I think I'll keep it. But it looks so creepy. It's the thought that counts, right? You wanted me to cheer up after all. I picked up the doll and looked at it closely. Sure, it looked pretty weird at first, but it could be cute if I looked at it from a certain angle. I gave him a small smile. Thanks! <laughs> You're welcome. It's good to see you smiling, even though the thing I made still kind of creeps me out. Anyway, you should come with me to the dining room. We're almost finished with the food, and, well, I don't mean to brag, but we're pretty decent chefs. Sounds great. Lead the way. Mmm, something smells good. My stomach rumbled in agreement. I was starving. Oh, the girl's awake. Excuse you? I have a name, you know. Should we really care? Sam, I will roast that tongue for dinner if it doesn't stop flapping in that idiotic mouth of yours. Shh. Whatever. I apologize for his attitude. Oh, oh it, that's fine. <laughs> Good. I hope you'll enjoy the meal we prepared for you. Meal? For a second, my mind didn't understand what James meant. Maybe it was the dog getting to, in to my head and distracting me. Ah, that's right. Damon and Matthew mentioned that they were making the dinner as an apology. Uh, oh, wait, you didn't have to? We insist. Besides, it's quite impossible to undo our cooking, even if you command us to. All right, well, thank you. Matthew put down the last of the plates on the table and bowed a bit exaggerated to me, gesturing to the table in a sweeping motion. Ha, ah, there we go. Dinner's all served. The table is filled with various foods from an eclectic selection of cuisines. 
One portion of the table was filled with elegantly plated Asian foods, and another portion of some yummy-looking desserts. And there were yet more and more plates than I could have possibly imagined. Whoa, that's a lot of food, and all of it looks so good! We hope you enjoy it, my sweet. What? Sweet? Me? That's enough, Eric. <laughs> You're no fun, James. I don't need to be fun, Eric. Miss, please follow me. I didn't know what it came over me, but whether it was his politeness or maybe his power, but I couldn't help but take the, his offered arm. James seemed very kind and intelligent, but aside from that, there was something that set him apart from his brothers. Not to mention, he didn't really seem to hold much appreciation for them. Miss, I have to ask, why do you live alone? Oh, well, it's kind of a long story. I'm all ears if you wish to tell. Go for it. <laughs> to put it briefly, I just moved here today. That explains the luggage you brought in when you came through the front doors. By the way, we put your belongings in the room you were sleeping in. That seems to be the master bedroom, I believe. Thanks. This house is really big. I don't think I even explored the entirety of the estate when I was a child. You lived here before? Mm, no. Truth be told, this is my grandfather's house. I used to visit him all the time when I was younger. May I ask why you now live in your grandfather's house? He actually passed away yesterday. It was bequeathed to me in his will, and I was sent here sent to live here, whether I liked it or not. My condolences. It seems like you don't like the idea of living here. It's not that I don't like this house, or that I don't have fond memories of being here. It's just the implications that come with staying at this estate. It's kind of complicated to explain. How do you feel about it? I certainly wasn't expecting that question, but in a good way. It was different from what I had heard the entire day at school. I appreciated the fact that he was willing to listen. I feel angry, sad, scared, and confused. It's hard picking out the different emotions I'm feeling right now. I wish I was stronger. You don't have to be strong. What do you mean? I understand that you're going through a difficult time, so it's okay to feel those emotions. You don't have to be strong at all. God, James, get to every woman's heart, why don't ya? I wish I had a guy like James. Why don't I have a dude? Why don't I have a male kiwi near me? That sounds so wrong. But you get the point. Or KS, or whatever my nickname will be. A male Sylvie there. God, I wish I could just pluck him out of the game and just go, this is my boyfriend. We're going to be forever. God, that sounds creepy. Thank you. Uh, are you all right? There seems to be a small bruise on your cheek. And there goes the emotion. He caught me off guard with that comment. I thought no one would have noticed something as small as that. Oh, oh, I'm fine. He stopped and leaned in close, a bit too close for comfort, or maybe it was just me, inspecting my face. He was really quite tall, having to bend over so, so much just to look at me straight in the face. It was hard to look at him, especially when he was so close. After a few seconds, he straightened up and began walking again. Well, if you're having any problems, I'm always here to listen. That's really kind of you to offer that. My pleasure. Here's your seat. Let me get your chair for you, lovely lady. Uh, oh, uh... Eric was very charming, and his smile pulled at my heart. The way he kept flirting with me def definitely designated him as the charmer of the demons, yet there was a little distance in his eyes. By the way, I apologize for my behavior earlier. Stealing your second kiss like that. Huh? Oh yeah, when I didn't believe that they were incubi. It, it's fine, I guess. I, I mean, you didn't j just get up and grab a kiss for no reason. I'm not as forward, unlike Sam. <laughs> Suddenly, Eric leaned in and whispered in my ear. I won't lie, though. 
I enjoyed kissing you and feeling you melt in my arms. I was torn between smacking him and trying to play it cool. I always go for the smack. No! Oh, that's going to sting. S sorry, I, I panicked. No, I was expecting that. I drew my attention to the back, back to the dishes. I was both intrigued and slightly scared by the amount of food they made. Seeing my expression, Eric leaned forward and proudly smiled, gesturing to all the dishes with a dramatic sweep of his arm. I made almost all of the dishes myself. Humorously enough, Matthew looked at him with a shocked expression, as if he was betrayed. His face changed instantly to that of a frown. And I'm the Queen of the Nile! What's that supposed to mean? Oh, I love these two so much. It's just so funny. Me, you, and James did the work together, dummy. It's you, James, and I, Matthew. <laughs> Little boys will always make mistakes. Matthew looked at James in disbelief, probably for siding with Eric. And he annoyedly swiveled back to Eric to confront him. I'm not a little boy. I'm barely a year younger than you. Well, you certainly don't act oh. like it. Oh, poor Matthew. Oh, Eric, you're so mean. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. Matthew seemed very much like a kid. He was adorable. However, I couldn't help but feel the same. Like in a way, he was much more mature than the others, especially er Eric. Didn't expect that cough. Huh? Is something funny? <laughs> no, no, nothing at all. Thanks for the meal, all of you. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome, miss. Such a well-mannered young lady. Beautiful inside and out. Eric, knock it off! In agreement with Matthew, Sam Lee cocked his head and glared at Eric. Seriously. You're getting really annoying with that suck-up act. It was obvious that Sam was the bad boy of the group. He had this big, tough act, and it was obvious he was physically stronger than the rest of the guys. But was there more to him than that? I'm just trying to be a gentleman. The young girl has already gone through so much. She deserves a good treatment. Hmm. Eric, you're getting... You even annoy me. And I'm playing the game. There's a difference between being a gentleman and being an obnoxious flirt. <laughs> Schooled even by James. You're gonna need some cold water for that burn. <laughs> that is kinda cool. Even looking at Sam's smirk. He's just like, yeah. You just got schooled by the nerd. <laughs> Aw, even Damon smiles. While well, Eric's over there pouting. By the way, I don't believe we caught your name even though you know each of us. Ah, I'm Violet. It's a pleasure to finally know your name. Okay, back. Yeah, that's a nice name. Thanks, Matthew. They're all comfortable around me. Despite the awkward situation we were in, it was a, as if it were natural for them to be around humans. I guess that's just how incubi work. But I was still curious about one thing. Excuse me. All at once, they looked at me. I didn't know why, but having all of them look at me made me feel kind of important, like a queen or something. What is it, miss? I wanted to thank you for the food. But I still want to know why you all came to here. I feel like I don't quite understand. Understand? Yeah, like being told that a bunch of incubi randomly appearing in your house was perfectly understandable. Oh, um, how do we explain? Sorry, I had a big coughing fit. We were attacked. We came here to heal. What's so difficult to understand? Now you're just being rude, Sam. Woo! Zing! I'm just saying, how is that difficult to understand? 
No, I mean, what specifically happened? Well, you see, we've been traveling around for quite some time now. Just recently we came into town, but we were jumped by this band of misfits. So, in order to escape and heal, we came here for shelter. Again, we apologize for the mess we made. It's fine, I guess. So, you're all better now, right? Yup, all thanks to you. Huh? Me? You see, beautiful, we feed on sexual energy. But we don't just get it from kissing lovely ladies such as yourself. We can simply touch someone's hand to obtain sexual energy. Everyone carries sexual energy, you know. How many times will Eric say that word? I was still in shock about their powers. It wasn't just kisses that gave them power, it was anything physical. No wonder I was out for a while. These incubi intrigued me, but at the same time I could almost hear a warning siren going off in my head. Is there anything else you wish to know? Well, what do you all plan to do now? Yeah, what are we gonna do now, James? That is a very good question. We just got here and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. We can take him easily. <laughs> uh... Not without more training, Sam. The result of that was clearly evident in our last encounter with them. At that moment, I didn't know what came over me, but I suddenly felt sorry for them. They couldn't possibly survive out there. If they didn't know it, it was illegal to break into people's homes, they probably didn't know a bunch of other stuff. They would probably ca cause chaos all over town. Or, on the flip side, they could be taken in for questioning and be poked and prodded like frog labs for research. That was even worse. But most of all, they reminded me of back then. Zing! Flashback. I was standing alone. The entire classroom was filled with laughter and chatter, but I stood in the midst of it, quiet and alone. It was strange seeing the whole world pass in front of me with such vibrancy, all while I stood, stood there. On the plus side, I wasn't engaged in any of the drama that might have arisen, like scribbling on someone's paper for revenge or kicking someone too hard. It was kind of nice just standing back and watching these, watching things pass by and life go on. I had long before convinced myself that I preferred being alone. I often said to myself in encouragement, Yeah, I want to be alone. There's no one I like better than me. So I had to spend more time with myself. Take it as you will. But there was a certain bitterness to it, coupled with being alone, made me feel sad. There was a difference between being alone and lonely. I just didn't realize it at that moment. Very wise child at the time. And even after that moment, my mother, my father, my mother, there was no one to turn to. I was so lonely. That's when I decided on on it right then. I was going to see my grandfather. I didn't care if my father wouldn't take me. I was going to walk my way over there and see what he had to say about it. I had never met, seen him before. I had never seen him before that. What better time to see him then? If no one else was going to help me with what I was feeling, I might as well go have turned to him. So after school, I decided to walk there. I had no idea how to get there. And I was only ar I was armed with only a scrap of paper with an address scribbled on it. As a seven-year-old, I obviously had great ideas. I soon became lost, and like I always did when I felt lost, I just stood there on the sidewalk, back pre pressed up against the wall, and eyes looking at, at the strangers passing by. And like always, people continued to pass by, and life continued to go on. I was sadder than ever. I had ended up in this the situation I was originally in. Nothing had changed. I had thought that I was silly for even think that I could change things with my own hands. That was until a voice brought me back to reality. Hun, is that, is that you? you? 
I looked up and saw an unfamiliar face. But it was obvious that whoever was talking to me knew who I was. And from that moment, things began to change. Life began moving its rusty joints, and I realized that things were moving along. Suddenly, I had become a part of the crowd that would move like a burly past me. I was no longer somebody who stood, someone who stood and watched as others hurried past me. Life had changed. I had changed. Because the very person who found me that day was my grandfather. <clears throat> I had the opportunity to help him, though, would I? I wanted to, but I wasn't sure if that was the best idea. After all, five demons in my house wasn't exactly the living arrangements arrangement I, that I had imagined when I first moved in. There was a mat the matter of making sure no one found out about their powers. Thinking about them as lab rats made my stomach queasy. And even if they passed for humans, how would I explain having guys living in my house? Imagine my friends came over. They would practically think I was a part of a harem or something. Oh god, imagine if my parents came over. I think my mom would faint. Who knows what my dad would do. I think he would have them arrested on the spot. Ugh, this was hard. Maybe I should have written out a pros and cons list before I actually having to make the decision. Don't, Don't worry, worry too much, too much about, about it. it. You, you have plenty of time to decide. to decide. Besides, Besides you, should you should do what, what makes, makes you happy, happy as well. well. It was strange that I happened to remember what my grandfather said to me when I was little. But it did kind of make sense. They weren't exact and they weren't in the same exact situation I was in before. But I did want to help them out. I think it would ease my conscience and also make me a bit happy to give them help. As weird as that sounded. Clenching my hands into fists. Sorry if you heard that. I strengthened my resolve to speak up. Well, um, you could... What was that, lovely lady? That is, uh... Spit it out already. You can stay here with me if you like. As soon as I finished that sentence, my sentence, the room became still. I wasn't. Oh, I'm not sure what went through their heads at, from my words. The silence in the air cut like a knife until I finally spoke up once more. It seemed like you all needed a place to stay, and well, I just moved into this giant house, so it seemed like it made sense. It was still quiet in the room. I decided to keep talking. If you'd like to stay here, though, there are two things that I need all of you to follow. Yes? First of all, you can't use your powers or deliberately do something that might harm me or any guests that come over. Well, save for any of these, but you get the drift. That sounds reasonable. Second, you kind of have to help. You have to help me with any errands around the house. This place is kind of big, so yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. It's all right, really. I mean, I just started living here myself, so I would appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. We'll live here and train while helping you with the house. Servants for the lovely princess. What? Are you serious? Shh, be quiet, Sam. I haven't slept in a bed for days. Oh, oh poor Matthew. He's so adorable. I just want to be his little cheeks. <laughs> they all seemed to like the idea, except for Sam and, hey, I didn't really hate the idea either, even if they were incubi. It'd be interesting having five guys help with help me with taking care of the house, given they would follow the rules I had just laid down. Grr, fine, but we're not staying here forever. Only until we can beat up that group of punks. I think that is a reasonable time limit for our stay. Yes, this is awesome! Also beautiful, if you need a bedfellow... Um... Eric, knock it off. I was happy they agreed. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be lonely for a while. Maybe it was because they all needed my help and... 
might want to help people was fulfilled. I would never be sure. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in! Finally, I'm starving. Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with food on the table. I noticed that James's eyes twitch and ir twitching in irritation, so I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost couldn't hold it in. So I didn't. <laughs> I couldn't hold my laughter anymore. As I laughed, Matthew and Sam looked my way, faces stuffed. Is something funny? <laughs> what are you laughing at? I stopped to catch my breath. I leaned over the table and took a few breaths before replying. You both are so funny! Both their faces turned a slight pink before they looked away from me. And they swallowed their food in their mouths. Sh shut up! We're not funny! We're hungry! Well, we're, we're glad that we made you laugh. Look at Sam's face. Shut up, Matthew! What? I'm just saying. <laughs> See, James, it's entertainment for her. They were they were funny to me. At least I enjoyed the food. As I watched, I took a couple pieces of food for myself and placed them on my plate before eating as well. Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was strange eating with just guys, but they were enjoyable to be around. They made me feel like a part of their family as we ate together. However, our peace was soon disturbed. It's my mom. Excuse me. Hello? Hey, honey, how are you? I'm sorry I didn't get to see you off. Hi, Mom. Everything's fine. I'm actually eating dinner right now. Oh, good, good. So there was food there. Well, your father wanted me to call and talk to you about having a house party tomorrow night to celebrate the new house and all. A house party? Tomorrow night? So soon? Your father insists. You know how he is with events. I knew exactly what she meant. He didn't like long, relaxing periods between important events. It was slightly messed up. I was expected to act on a drop of a dime, from moving immediately the day after a funeral to my grandfather's house, to now organizing a party. I know. Well, since I don't exactly have you two here to help me arrange it, I'm gonna need some time to prepare things. Oh, that's fine. I mean, Suzu and Naomi can help. I have work, and you know how your father is. Yeah. Oopsie. Drop. No, 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 don't get back here. I know. I have to do it myself. He won't help. I'm sure it'll be amazing, honey. I have faith in you. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. All right, I gotta go. I love you, sweetie. Speaking of going, I gotta go, too. With this episode, at least. If you like this, remember to leave a, a comment, subscribe, and leave a like. And I will see you in the next episode. See you guys then, and hit that like, and you'll have a fabulous day. Goodbye.